G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. In this video, we're going to talk about particle count methods. Really common in used oil analysis, um, so it's really important we understand how the particle count is done. There's actually three different methods. So there's ISO 4407, ISO 11500, and ASTM D764710. Uh, we're actually just going to talk about the first two today. Um, and in a future video, we'll discuss the uh, diluted particle count technique. In a previous video, we talked about how to read an ISO cleanliness code. So as an example, I've got 8,050 particles above 4 micron. I would go down to the table. 8,050 is between 10 and 5,000. So that gives my first number of 20. Likewise, for 95 is between 80 and 160. So second number is 14. And for 14 microns, that's between 20 and 10, so the third number is 11. And that would give me my three number ISO cleanliness code. The thing is that that video described ISO 4406, which is actually not a test method. It's a, a way of classifying um, cleanliness code. So it's actually a classification system. In order to measure an ISO cleanliness code, we need um, a specific spec, and the first one we'll talk about is ISO 4407, which is particle count by optical microsco uh, microsco yeah, microscopy. Hard one to get right. All right, so how this method goes is that you have a used oil sample, and what they'll do at the lab is they'll actually take a little bit of it, right? Um, probably not with an actual pipette, but uh, with an automated machine, and they pass it through a filter patch. Now this filter patch is then looked at under a microscope, and what you'll see under the microscope is a whole bunch of different particles of different shapes and sizes. I'm gonna simplify it down here just for the purposes of this presentation, and say that we've got three different sizes of particles in different numbers, and they're roughly in the four, six, and 14 micron range. I'll put the counts up for you so that we can explain how we do it. All right, so above four micron, what I would need to do is add all three of those numbers together to give me a total of 52 particles. Above six micron, I would add three and eight to give me 11. And for the 14 micron count, then I would just choose the biggest lot. That gives me my three numbers, 52, 11, and three. And I would then take those numbers and match them with the ISO cleanliness spec. And that's how I would get my ISO cleanliness code. Now, one thing you'll notice about this method is that it is extremely labor intensive. It's literally a person looking through a microscope, counting particles. That makes it really time consuming as well. The other thing is that the precision can be dependent on who's behind the microscope. Um, you know, we always talk about human factors and while many lab te technicians are extremely good at their job and very dedicated, um, you can imagine that this is a very laborious uh, task and errors are made. The other thing that we get is false readings due to the agglomeration of particles. What do I mean by that? Well, imagine you saw this through the microscope and you count that and you say that's one particle that's very large, maybe it's you know 30 micron in size. But what if that was actually three microns stacked on top of each other? Sorry, three particles stacked on top of each other. Um, so we're getting a false reading there. However, despite all these limitations, this method is considered quite accurate. And it's also unaffected by color, air, and water. And I say that because this is a limitation of the next uh, type of test, which is ISO 11500. And that is automated particle count by light extinction. And this test method was developed really to overcome the time and labor limitations of the previous test method. So we'll talk about how we do it. So imagine you have a stream of lubricant and you pass that stream, stream through a, a, a test tube, right? You'll have particles which can kind of flow uh, along with the lubricant flow. So we want some way of, of counting that as the lubricant flows past, let's say, a detector. Well, what we can do is we can set up a interface where we have a laser on one side and a detector on another side, and we shine a light through the sample. 
so usually it is a, a laser, but it can just be a really bright, focused light. What's going to happen is that, and I'll slow this down, as a particle crosses the light beam, it's going to cast a shadow on the detector. And the detector identifies that shadow as a particle in the stream. So that's how it counts it. Now, there are also some limitations to this test method as well. So because it relies on the extinction of light, what happens if, for example, I have a really dark oil that I'm trying to test? Well, as I shine the laser through that sample, the light is already extinct by the time it gets to the detector. And so if I have a particle flowing past the detector, there isn't enough differentiation between the shadow and what light remains at the detector to really be able to make an accurate count. So there's a problem with the, uh, the resolution, if you like. Similarly, if I have a water bubble, that can also show up as a particle because the detector isn't really intelligent enough to be able to tell the difference. It just measures a shadow. Same thing goes for maybe an air bubble. Um, could also be sludge or even additive particles. So silicon additives, um, which typically form part of the anti-foment system, are notorious for being picked up on uh, particle counts. So this, this is a real limitation of that system as well. All right, so what does that mean for us as recipients of used oil analysis reports? Well, the fact is it's, it's 99% probable that your laboratory is using the ISO uh, 11500 test. That's the automated laser light test. Um, and they do that because, you know, your local laboratory is probably doing thousands of samples per day, uh, and they simply don't have the time to do a, a manual test. Now, this is not to say that the test is, is wrong, um, but it's imperfect. Every test um, is going to have certain limitations. So we just need to recognize those limitations and take the results with a bit of a grain of salt. The other thing that we can do, and I'll explore this in a future video, is look at ASTM D7647, which is an attempt to actually refine the automated technique to try and take into account water, um, air entrainment, and soft particles. I say soft particles because um, the reason we care about the cleanliness of an oil is that if we have hard particles going through our system, it can cause uh, erosion, um, especially abrasive hard particles. And so if we have something like sludge, which is very soft, we actually don't care that that's really in the system, or at least not from a cleanliness standpoint. So again, we'll explore that in a future video. I hope this has been really helpful in an explanation of how particle count is done in the lab. This has been Lubrication Explained.